85% of palladium, 90% of rhodium, 40% of the platinum goes into AutoCAD to a single application. Secondary recycling industries are going through some major changes. A monthly climb over several decades and then suddenly, boom, the bottom just, just dropped Fell out. off the cliff. Just fell off a cliff. Companies leaving the marketplace, depressed pricing, depressed volumes in the marketplace, but there's hope. The sales numbers are going to jump dramatically, but the transition to hybrids should increase. The VW Dieselgate scandal, they changed the rules of testing. As a result of that real-world testing change, PGM loadings generically across the board went up some 17%. Well, hold it. EV penetration rates are less than 17% globally. So you would think that PGMs, and specifically palladium and rhodium, would still be a hot ticket. No, it's not. What is the biggest issue affecting the PGM industry? The EV penetration mix isn't what's hurting the PGM basket. I contend what's killing the PGM basket today is just purely... Welcome to Noble Six Talks. We're here at the 49th annual IPMI conference in Scottsdale, Arizona. We have our friend and guest today, Mr. Matt Watson of Precious Metals Commodity Management. That's How are right. you doing, Matt? Good. How are you doing? Excellent. All right. So my first question for you, sir, what is your outlook for PGM metals, specifically platinum, palladium, and rhodium? Okay. So the big three that go into auto catalyst, uh, obviously vehicle sales and in particular ICE vehicle sales dictate these responses on how the PGM basket is doing. Um, some 85% of palladium, some 90% of rhodium, and uh, something closer to 40% of the platinum goes into AutoCAD to a single application. Hmm. And so ICE vehicle sales is a, is a big deal. Uh, keep in mind, folks, that uh, partially electrified hybrids, both plug-in hybrids and uh, standalone hybrids like a Toyota Prius, those two are considered ICE vehicles. They have an engine, they have a catalytic converter, and in fact, as you guys know, the loadings, the PGM loadings on those converters are actually higher than a similar ICE right. vehicle. They're very similar powertrains. Um, yeah, but uh, due to the concerns about cold start, um, meaning running on an electric speed and then having it come on uh, to an engine, that is the, the hardest part of the emissions uh, picture to manage. And so they had to raise the loadings as a result of that to help manage those spikes. So in any event... Um, you know, I, I look at the whole car market, and I look at it as it relates to the PGM basket, and, and I keep it simple in my, in my mind. So we had a, a big shift in our loadings on PGMs into vehicles across all ICE configurations. It has to do with post um, uh, the VW dieselgate scandal, right. right, when they discovered that some of these diesel vehicle makers were disabling their emission control systems in operation. During testing. And the way the testing was done, that was never captured. It, it evaded detection. And as they discovered this was going on, they changed the rules of testing uh, to certify and approve these new designs. And it's called real-world testing, where they take a vehicle, they run it over hill, over dale, and they collect data dynamically. And that's how they see things like these cold start problems on right. hybrids. They're experiencing it them for themselves. They, they see the data very clearly. And so... As a result of that real-world testing change, PGM loadings generically across the board went up some 17%. Well, hold it. EV penetration rates are less than 17% globally. So you would think that PGMs, and specifically palladium and rhodium, would still be a hot ticket. No, it's not. The EV penetration mix isn't what's hurting the PGM basket. I contend what's killing the PGM basket today is just purely the ICE sales are so down. Uh, Post-COVID, post-2017, we hit a peak. 2017, 93 million and a half million vehicles sold. We've not approached that since. Right. Still. That's right. Our numbers, you look at the plot, month over month of car sales, it climbs, it climbs. We have a chart I hope you're going to insert right here that shows a monthly climb over several decades, and then suddenly, boom, the bottom just, just drops out. fell off the cliff. Just fell off a cliff. Right. That's what's hurting PGM prices. That's the big question mark. Can palladium and rhodium still have some upside? Yes, if there's enough hybrid production, we could. So what's going on on the EV front? Let's talk about this for a minute. EVs, it's a done deal. They're selling like hotcakes, you'll be led to believe. Well, not so much. There's problems in River City here, right? One is the depreciation value of these new EVs, a new Tesla. Mm -hmm. You want to lose about 60% of your value in the first five years? Easy, go buy a Tesla. You will lose, your depreciation schedule is just unbelievable. Oh, yeah. And, and so resale is a problem. That's right. I still have lots of questions about the, um, the life of these batteries and what it's, what it's going to do to the, the life cycle of EV vehicles as a whole. Like, like we scrap ice. You know, what's the rate? Will it increase the rate of scrappage? I, I think it very clearly could. 
And so there's, a, I think, a lot of price. And then the problems with the pricing and fabbing these cars. All these legacy OEM makers, everything from Ford to BMW, everything, they're losing thirty to fifty thousand dollars per vehicle on EVs. This is after the seven, seven and a half thousand dollars subsidy. Right, that's going away. Yeah, that's going away. Hey guys, have you ever asked yourselves, am I really reaching the top of the market on my catalytic converter recycling? Are you guys decanning and getting paid via an assay? And if you're not decanning, why not? Are you still throwing your oxygen sensors in your scrap bin and getting paid pennies on the dollar? What about your spark plugs? A lot of you watching this touch handle spark plugs on the daily. Stop throwing those in the trash. They have recycling value also. I want to encourage you to take our three-day workshop. Businesses have learned to go from selling catalytic converters in the can to decanning and actually reaching the top of the market by getting paid via an assay. Businesses have also learned how to recycle spark plugs and they're doing it on a massive scale. Click the link below, take advantage of this opportunity, start making more profits for your business today. So now, so, so, are, so are EV sales gonna to continue to climb on this S-curve parabolic slope like we've heard in presentations here this week? I think not. I, I think the, if, if you let free markets reign, hybrids will win the day. Is that just a North American perspective though? Uh, you know, the ones you really gotta convince, the ones that are pulling us further and further out into left field are the Europeans, quite frankly. Right. I'm, I'm sorry to piss off the Europeans there. Sorry, my friends, but uh, it's very true. They are still so enamored with the Green New Deal and, and all these green initiatives. They're not slowing down, even on the hydrogen economy, which I, I contend is a right. is kind of a lost economic cause. Um, they're still going to do large-scale trials, and um, they're going to have some large-scale failures on cost. Not on performance, not on technology capability, but on performance. The hydrogen economy is, is going to be too expensive. So, get it, so get back to the vehicle market. So here we are. Car sales are down. Why? Well, the damn car prices are so expensive. That's what I was going to ask. Average price of a car in the U.S. today, 48000 and change? Are you kidding me? I, I really question how is much. Is that why I, sales are down? I think that has Is that why people are hanging if, out of cars longer? If you go take the sales ramp volume I was talking about and, and interject a, a, a sister plot with the average price per vehicle, you'll see it coincides as well that as these vehicle prices are climbing, not just subtly, but you know it was they were under uh, thir uh, thirty five thousand not too long ago. Suddenly we're sitting here forty eight. I mean that was a big rate of change very quickly. Yeah, and That's the vehicle that your wife wants is over a hundred thousand. Exactly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's another layer of problems I can't help you with. But um, um, but uh, these are the fundamental issues: the economics. I get concerned. We as a PGM industry are a little bit lost on serving our customers economics. We're so jumped on the hype and the bandwagon. We were screaming transition, transition. All these things are going to help us. And they've done nothing but add cost and add to inflation and add to our buying power. You know, it's really, it's really so hurting I'm, our ability to I was going, I was going to ask you, what is the biggest issue affecting the PGM industry? But I think you just answered that <laughs> question. Hmm? Yeah, car sales. It's car sales. Car sales. Right. Demand um, for the we cars. haven't recovered from pre-COVID. Yep. And haven't car sales dropped from 17 million to about 15 million? Something like that. Yeah, we'll like be lucky that. to get to 15, 15, one. Yeah. 15, one. Now that's a that's killer. A, that's a yeah. big drop. Yeah. Right. And um, and that's just North America. That's just, you know basically a saturated car market already. But where you're really feeling it the most is I think is some of the Asian growth markets. Right. That the, there should be far greater sales than there are. So. We've got mobility is, is is key to our economies, and we're not we're not servicing that segment very well at all. We've we've driven up costs, we've driven in waste, we've forced all these EV transitions prematurely, and they have just spun resources like crazy and driven up the cost of all vehicles. So That's Congress and Senate have um, passed the repeal of the um, the triple waiver right. that California had with the EPA, right? How do you see that? I know Trump hasn't signed it into law yet, but well, how do you see that as having any effect, if at all? So this is a really interesting question. So basically, the Trump administration, they're, they're, they're really going to go after the emissions standards that are set by CARB, California Air Resource Board. Right. And basically, they're, they're going to get away from the U.S. having two sets of emission standards, and we're going to unify around the federal standards, which are the looser of the two standards. Right. That's right. More importantly, though, they're also in those mandates where all these um, – NEV mandates where they had, uh, starting with heavy duty in 2025, you had to have X percentage of your fleet 
be a zero emission vehicle, either a battery, electric, or a fuel cell vehicle. That's right. Uh, and that went from 25 and quickly got up to 100% of the mix by 2035. Mm -hmm. So they had all these schedules. By 2035, everything had to be a, a zero emission vehicle. That's been nuked already. That's, well, that's it's been both nuked. On, on heavy duty and on light duty. Both. And it hasn't it been signed. But once it's signed, where does it go? Are they going to tie it up in the courts? I I, th I think um, you're just going to see the Trump administration just continue to plead for um, market independence. Let, let free markets reign. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the natural response, again, is going to be more hybrids. The car makers love making the hybrids. They can make money on those hybrids. They sell themselves. You don't have any subsidy structure out there already. Right. Um, and it's something the customer wants. Gee, let's not make the, you know, let's make something the customer wants. Yeah. And it's more environmentally friendly. Yeah, and it's not the full end shift that you're looking for, but it's a step function in route to getting there. To getting into EVs, I'm hot on the what the EV industry needs is a battery chemistry, a design churn. So we've talked about that. That you need to go from today's nickel and cobalt containing varieties and go to a lithium sulfur mm -hmm. and double the energy density. density. Per mm -hmm. kilogram material, mm -hmm. meaning you could take your 1,100 pound Tesla battery and cut it in half and get the same range wow. and mileage. Oh, probably that's more a range. big deal. That is a big deal. That's a big deal in critical minerals and the whole bit. Right. By the way, you get away from nickel and cobalt in this equation, which are the dirty elements in why the EVs are just about on par with ice in terms of emissions. If you listen to someone like me, I'll convince you they're just about right on top of each other. It's because nickel and cobalt are so dirty. So let's get away from that. Let's go to sulfur. The environmental, environmentalists will love this. Okay, lithium sulfur, here we go. Until they find out that 90% of the sulfur comes from petrochemical refining. <laughs> <laughs> then you lose them. And then we'll, yeah, then we'll be in trouble again. But, uh, but well, we've got to double, the, double these batteries. I, I got to do the design. I kind of feel that, that they're going to tie, the they're gonna tie, right. tie up that in court. Absolutely. Right. I feel they're going to tie that up in court and, and slow it down and do everything that they can. I think the automakers now, all the legacy guys, they're on board with the slowdown. Well, they are now. I mean, everybody's pulling the plug on this really rapid electrification schedules. Right. They're all backing off. Well, you know, when you're from um, California. And you it's, know not our... just, it's not just a Trump thing. It's the Europeans as well. And the problem with the Europeans is they got this, you know, the EU, you know, legislative body now that's just a... So these automotive tariffs... <laughs> it's just in the way. <laughs> that, are, ...that are affecting the manufacturer of components for new cars... How do you see that playing out here with oh. Canada and Mexico? Is, uh, is that is that a big issue, or is it they're going to resolve this? I, I, I think we, again, let's just turn to free markets. Let the let these guys drive themselves, and and I think we'll be better off, and and even get better emissions as a result. Uh, it may not be this utopia that they strive for, but it's a step in the right direction. So your outlook is, we need better, more open free markets. Okay. Right. So that's on the that's on the automotive side. You right. Me, that's the big ticket. You're right. That's the number one issue. Second issue right behind that is nothing to do that any of us can control. That's the mining, and that's the difference between platinum group metals, like we have been mining for 50 years now successfully right. in South Africa, mm -hmm. on what's known as the eastern and western limbs, uh, where there's two different reefs, one at a half mile deep and one at about a mile deep that they they tap into. Um, those are platinum rich extractions, and so the name platinum group metals makes sense. Well, if you go to South Africa's northern limb or northern uh, Zimbabwe or to Russia or North America, rest of the world, there you start mining palladium group metals, where instead of two platinums to every one palladium, it flip-flops. Now you get two or even four to one palladium wow, that to much. platinum. That's too That's much. Rich. That's too much. Yeah. What are we do with all this palladium? Right. And Aren't again, we in a surplus? And, and back to our auto recyclers that you guys are a part of this community, right? That's such an important thing that you're going to be harvesting more palladium out of the ICE vehicles that are on the road. Out of the 1.4 billion vehicles on the road, a lot of palladium. So out. it's a supply-demand issue with You're going to get depressed over 100 prices. million troy ounces of palladium back uh, mm -hmm. over time from wow. that, right? That's and a lot. It's going, to be a, it's going to be a pretty significant surplus. Right. We have to find a home for the palladium. For the sake of the PGM basket as a whole, we're going to have to come up with new applications and new demand for palladium. Quick. Yeah. Electrification will come. It's going to come slower than people think. Right. I think some of these mandates are going to go away, but it will electrify over time. But meanwhile, back at the ranch, then what are we going to do about palladium? Again, the Russians, who are, when you look at the mix, they're 40% of the palladium mining and supply. So they're a big part of this discussion. They get it. They're spending over $100 million on a palladium research center doing exactly that, developing next generation palladium applications. That's the sort of efforts we've got to get more in tune with. That was my question for Anglo, or excuse me, Val Valterra, uh, this morning as they were presenting is, 
you know, they've been supporting the Lion Battery Project. And, um, you know, we need, we need more of that. And even IPMI as a community, I would argue, we need to tailor some of our sessions and discussions around what's next. Palladium. So what can we use it because, for? Because, yeah, you got, you got great new uses for ruthenium and iridium and this, that, and the other. So what if the mainstay of, of that basket... It's palladium. It's palladium. It doesn't have a home. Remember back in the it's day. It's going to screw up your recyclers. It's going to screw I, you guys up. It's going right. to screw everybody. And right. I'm talking about before the catalytic converter, when Russia and South Africa were producing a lot of PGMs, and there was significant palladium oversupply in the marketplace. Yeah. What did Russia do back in the day, in the 70s and in the 60s, when oh. they were producing <clears throat> all this palladium, and there's zero demand in the market except for maybe... Yeah. Dental alloys or yeah, yeah. other things of that nature. No, they were stock- uh, of course, the, the, they, they're they primarily stockpiled a, it. Just so everybody knows, they're primarily a nickel mine. The palladium comes along for the ride, right? So to of speak, course, right? yeah, um, more or less. The, yeah. fina- the mm-hmm. financials have shifted now. The palladium is worth more in value than, <laughs> than the nickel, of course. Um, but um, but yeah, no, they're just obviously they huge. just stockpiled it. They yeah, they had, stockpiled it. That's all they did with before it. there was a home for it, and right? it was low value. It was below one hundred dollars an ounce back in those days. And, and then as our emissions control systems and the catalytic converters got more intelligent, better designed, they kept cr- cranking up the palladium loadings. Right, and that's why right. those palladium loadings are built into again to the one point four billion ICE vehicles on the road today. Right, that, right. Um, so those are what. So we're we need hard. some scientists to come up with some great applications. Yes. On an industrial scale, so that they yes industries can consume good great ding, 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 quantities. Ding ding ding, things ding, ding, like ding. in the hydrogen economy, they're finding ways to use palladium where they weren't able to use it before. Cool, uh, things like um, food preservation, um, ethylene starvation. Um, there's a use of a palladium catalyst that can make your fruits and vegetables last four times longer. That's what I've heard. Yeah, and with today's food prices, oh, that would to me <laughs> that that's would a help. Right? That's yeah, a winner. Yeah, definitely. Right? Um, things like that. We've yeah. got to really not just develop them, but you know, get these markets, kind of foster the market to grow around those those metals. Well, so that's, certainly the secondary. So that's really the challenge in my mind. I, I, yeah. I, two things. So again, the EV penetration going slower, and um, but it's, this, it's just the total sales that are off that are killing us the most. And then second, right behind that, the supply picture is going to be r- routinely changing dynamically more and more every year over time now from here on out to where it becomes more palladium rich. And what are we going to do about it? And that? our secondary recycling industries are um, going through some major changes in the last couple of years. Yeah. And restructuring, new companies entering the market, other companies leaving the marketplace. Sure seems like there's some consolidation going some on Some consolidation. It's, uh, it's, uh, we're hearing a little bit about consolidation right now. Right. And it's, it's all about depressed pricing, depressed volumes in the marketplace, and uh, but there's hope. <laughs> yeah. There there certainly is because uh, we have hybrids mm-hmm. and higher loadings. We just need if we get, financially if, if to we, make those cars more affordable, yeah. lower those interest rates, and sell more. Of we them. should be able and sell more. Yeah, we sell should more, be able to work our volume. way right out of this without a, without a problem. Yeah. And again, on the emerging markets, you'll, you're going to find a lot of the home for these will be emerging markets, not just a transition to hybrids in the U.S. Right. For us, it'll be right. well, not the sales numbers are going to jump dramatically, but the transition to hybrids should increase more. Wow. Right, that's right? great. But the, the growth in total vehicle sales, mostly from well, that from was market. quite an interesting discussion. I I just want to thank you for D- joining different us than today. what you expected, huh? Yeah, I was. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Great, it was a great topic. Okay, thank you, Matt. No, no problem. I love to talk to you guys. Thanks, Matt. All right, everybody, take care.